Today, we're going to take a look at a $3 microcontroller that anybody can use to detect hackers trying to break into your Wi Fi network on this episode of Hackbyte. The ESP8266 microcontroller has a variety of different uses, but what we're going to do today is truly exciting and interesting. If you've ever worried about maybe a neighbor hacking into your Wi-Fi, there's an easy way you can set up a separate Wi-Fi network with a seemingly vulnerable server that will allow you to identify anytime someone tries to connect. What we're going to do today is take an ESP8266 and flash an Arduino sketch over to it, which will allow us to set this up to look like a Wi-Fi network hosting a vulnerable file server. If anybody connects to it, it will send a alert via a canary token, which will let us know that someone is poking around where they shouldn't be. Now, once we have an ESP8266 based board like this D1 Mini and Arduino IDE installed on our computer, then we can get started. Now to get started with this project, you'll need to go to the GitHub repository, which you can find at this address or by going to my uh, GitHub, which is Gikar, and going to ESP8266 underscore router underscore honeypot. Now, this project is based off of a library written by Dan Hoover. That's the ESP Canary library. And this is a really awesome library that allows you to create a Canary token and then use it as the trigger for an awesome FTP honeypot. Now, what my friend Stefan and I have done is combine this with a script that will allow you to extend your network connection, kind of like a, a network extender, uh, if you will. And this will allow you to create a router with a weak password or a strong one if you really want that has an internet connection and also is hosting this vulnerable FTP server, which is actually a trap for hackers. So our goal is going to be to create something that a hacker might find and be like, ooh, look at this Wi-Fi network, break into it, or even just join it if you don't want to set a password, and then try to get into the FTP server and end up triggering the trap. So you can see that the setup here is pretty easy. We just need to download this, open it in Arduino, and make sure that this is installed properly. And then we've also got some variables to change, such as the Wi-Fi network name that we're connecting it to, the password, and then the Wi-Fi network name we want it to create, as well as the password that we are expecting the hacker to be able to break into. Now, you can also see we have some additional variables here, which is the Canary token URL. And uh, we can set the password. Although if we want to make it so this will just accept any username and password, we can just use this percentage sign and it will do that. So you can kind of control how sensitive you want this to be. You can either make it so it's only looking for people who are brute forcing by setting a relatively weak username and password, or you can just have it so that anybody who attempts to connect will trigger the trap. So let's go ahead and get started with this. The first thing we're going to do is create a canary token. And this is a really awesome way that you can take a token. We'll do a web bug. And then we need an email address. So in this case, we're going to go here, copy this. And I'm just using 10 minute mail. So uh, you guys don't email me on this. And I'm going to go back to canary token, paste this in. And then I'm going to make some sort of note to say what it is I'm triggering. I am triggering the test. There is no danger. OK, cool. So I create my Canary token. And I should get this unique code that I can use. And if I were to go to it, then it should basically tell me uh, a little bit of information about the person that clicked on this link. So in the case of our code, it's going to tell us the IP address of the device that triggered the trap. So we'll go ahead, go to the GitHub repository, and download the code. You can download the zip file. And then within that, you should see the ESP router honeypot.inl. Now, what we'll do here is open this in Arduino IDE. And once that's opened, we should be able to plug in our D1 Mini or our other ESP8266 based device. And provided we've installed it properly, we can start setting this up. So to set this up properly, we first need to make sure that we've installed the ESP8266 board into Arduino. You can see that this is the proper URL, this one on the top that I'm highlighting, uh, to make sure you have in the additional board manager URL, which is under preferences. Once you have this, you'll also need to make sure that you have the ESP8266 series of boards installed by going to Tools, Board, Board Manager, and then typing in ESP8266, and then installing the ESP8266 by community package. Now, once you have that done, 
let me just show it off what it looks like. It's this one right here. Once you have this installed, then you should be able to flash code to any ESP8266 device that's supported. Now the final step will be to make sure that we've included the proper library, which is the library I mentioned earlier. So we'll go to include library, manage libraries under sketch, and then we'll be able to type in ESP Canary, and that should bring up the proper library to install. All right, so once it updates the list of installed libraries, we will type this in here, ESP Canary, and that should bring us, here we go, by Dan Hoover. We just click install, and this should be everything we need to now flash the project. So on my phone, I'm going to create an access point for this to join, and I'm going to make that access point named, uh, let's see, testnet, and uh, the password's gonna be mydoogle. Now, we're also going to create a new access point with the uh, network name of Honeypot and the password of Honeypot. And if we scroll down here, we also need to put in our Canary token value. So if I go back to the Canary token that I've generated, I can copy this, go to the code, paste this right in here, and now we're at the part where we can decide how sensitive we want to make this. So in this case, I'm gonna make it so you have to try to log in with admin and password. If you try to log in and supply other credentials, it will not trigger the Canary token. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to tools. And what we need to do is make sure we have the correct board supported uh, or selected. So I'm gonna select board, Lolan Wemos D1 Mini, that's the correct board for me. And then I'll go to the port and I'm going to select the serial port right here. And that should be everything I need. So with all these things selected and of course our D1 Mini plugged in, I should be able to just press this button and slowly upload the code. Flashing without a trench coat. Compiling sketch. Mm. Compiling. Compiling. Uploading. Writing. And finally, just like that, we've uploaded our code. Okay, so we can see now that it is done uploading. If I pull this up, I should see all the progress of it having written. And what we want to do now is press Command Shift M to open the serial monitor. And provided that our baud rate is set to 115200, so that we can actually understand this and it's not gibberish, we can press the reset button, and that should let us see the way that this is loading. So if there's a mistake here or a problem, then we should see it pretty quickly. Like if you just see a bunch of dot, 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 then it means that it can't successfully connect and maybe you got a detail wrong. So we can see here that we have successfully connected. Uh, we now have the Wi-Fi network Honeypot with password Honeypot that is natted behind testnet. So that means we've connected to testnet and we're using its internet connection to offer up a connection on this new network called Honeypot. So let's go ahead and see what that network is like. I'm gonna go ahead and go here. I'm going to select the Honeypot network. And when this joins, I should be able to then go to a terminal window and prove that I have internet. So I'm gonna ping 1111 and we can see there's no route to host. Oh, never mind. Okay, there we go. We now have a connection. All right, so we've proved that we can get an internet connection. It's not a very fast one, but if an attacker were to join this uh, network, then they would be able to access the internet. They'd be able to ping things, and it looks like just a kind of slow router. So I'm going to sudo arp scan dash L, and that's going to perform an arp scan of the local network. So we should be able to see all the different devices that are on this network with us. And we can see, there we go, there's some device at 172.217.28.254. So now let's do an, an nmap scan to see if there's any services running on it. sudo nmap and then the IP address. And after it completes, we can see, hey, actually, yes, we do have a service available here for us to access. And this is an FTP server on port 21. Pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to our Canary token. I'm going to go to manage this token. And I should be able to see uh, here that nobody's triggered this yet. It's totally untriggered. So it's been kind of burned into this program, but it hasn't been triggered yet. And now let's go ahead and try to connect via FTP and see if we can trigger this. 
So I'm going to connect to the FTP server at 172.217.28.254 on port 21. That's what this command does. And once it's done, it's going to ask us for our username and password. So let's put in the wrong one. I'm just going to type in this. And it says failed. So if we go over uh, to the Canary token, maybe uh, let's see if it fired. So it actually looks like it said that it fired over here. If I refresh this, then it looks like it has been triggered once. So that's interesting. So it looks like even though I supplied the wrong user, it still registered this as a connection attempt. So if I quit and then log in with the proper credentials, admin, and password, there we go. We have FTP OK. If I go over to Arduino, I can see that, again, it has triggered the Canary token. So if I go over to Firefox and I refresh this, we can see that the token has now been triggered twice. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and see what has happened with the history. OK, so here, if I click on this, I can see that this hit was in Seattle, Washington, um, of course, where I live. And you can see that the user agent is actually the IP address here. So this is kind of tattling on the device that tried to access the, the forbidden FTP server here on the local network. So if I have a bunch of different devices all connected to my Honeypot network, I can tell which one is the one that was digging around where they weren't supposed to be. This ESP8266 based network extender is a really awesome project for catching hackers trying to connect to your network or even setting up an IoT network that your devices can connect to without endangering your main network. Now, an obvious problem with this is the fact that it is incredibly slow. So if an attacker were to connect and notice that suddenly it seems like they're back in 2001, they might figure out that this is a honeypot and not go after the FTP server. That being said, if there's someone that you really hate, you can always tell them that that's actually your Wi-Fi network and have them just be completely confused as to why you can live like this with such a slow internet speed. That's all we have for this episode. Make sure to check out our other Hack Fight content, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.